What's going on, Abnormal Family? It's been a good day today. I uh, battled a little bit of a migraine for uh, most part of the day, but it's the weather change. I kind of expect that. Um, I got one I'm going to bring to you today. It's going to kick off our series. Is Bigfoot peaceful? Is he dangerous? But uh, we're going to look at some accounts coming up. Also, I would like to thank everybody that has joined the membership to the channel. Everybody that has uh, donated to the PayPal it's all being used right now to do a huge investigation that I'm working on right now. I cannot wait to release to you guys. You are not going to want to miss this. Uh, also, we've got some really big things coming up. The channel has exploded. Uh, this week alone on YouTube, we've won over 150 new subscribers. Um, Y'all are awesome. I, I would have never in the world dreamed I would be where I'm right now. And I would never in the world a dream that I'm on my way to where we're headed with each and every one of you guys and it's cause of you guys. Also, don't forget also, I am going to be doing a live and it's going to be based on why I, my opinion on portals, we'll put it like that. I've already made the link, so all you have to do is go to my YouTube channel, go underneath lives, click on that live and click notify and it should notify you. I'm going to say it should. But anyways, let's talk about uh, today's. Uh, this happened to Albert Ostman, 1924, Toba Inlet, British Columbia. The suspect in this case was a Bigfoot. The outcome was an abduction. Albert Ostman in 1924, Ostman went on vacation to the rugged wilderness near, I believe it's Toba Inlet, British Columbia, Canada. One of his purposes at the time was to try to find what he claimed to be a long lost gold mine that he was convinced existed out there in the dense forest, which is already odd and intriguing enough as, as it is. That's, you can already tell it's going to be bad when you're going off out there like that. Overshadowed, he would be overshadowed by, by the bizarreness of what would purposely happen to him during his trip. While on his journey into the remote badlands, Osman Indian guide told him that the men who had allegedly originally found the lost gold mine, was rumored to have been killed by a Sasquatch, which was, according to Osman, the first time he had ever heard of such creatures, despite having long been a hardened outdoorsman. The Indian explains about the large hairy man-like beast they called Sasquatch, and told them of the large footprints they left behind. But Osman, at the time, did not believe a word of it, instead chalking it up to crazy old native legends. Not long after his... Not long after this, the two made... Uh, the two made camp at Osman headed out of his own with some supplies and a pack and armed with a rifle. He also took along a knife to investigate the pass through the mountains that he had seen, as well as do some prospecting. After a few days of camping alone, out in the wilderness, some rather odd things were noticed by Osman. One morning he found that some of the items in his camp had been moved around, although nothing had been taken uh, and Osman slept that night with his rifle within easy reach, thinking that perhaps a porcupine or other animal had come in, picked up, and moved the items around in his camp. See right there, something, something's messing around. Uh, the following morning, he found his backpack had been emptied out, but was still oddly hanging from where he had left it. At this time, some things were missing, such as a half-pound pack of prunes and all of his pancake flour. The only thing that hadn't been touched was his bag of salt. An examination of the camp turned up no footprints that the intrusion did not seem to be a work of animals since nothing had been torn apart or ransacked or thrown through. For three nights in a row, the mysterious intruder visited the camp unseen, and now all efforts Osman to stake out the camp to find the trespasser and act were to no avail. These guys are masters of their environment, camouflage, and movement. On the fourth night of these strange incidents, Osman went to bed, fully clothed, with his knife and rifle within easy reach. And this time he had intended to stay awake all night in order to catch the trespasser. But he eventually fell asleep and into a deep sleep. At some point he claims he was awoken by something picking him up, sleeping bag and all, and groggily thought it might be a snow slide. Although there was no snow in the area at the time, he said that he then felt what he had been put up on horseback. He thought he was put on a horseback. 
and whatever was carrying him was walking. He couldn't see anything as he was wrapped up in his sleeping bag and desperately grabbed for his rifle as he tried to figure out who or what was carrying him along. Unable to move without his race equipment sticking into him uncomfortably, uncomfortably, Osman could only wait there as the encroaching dark to see where he was being taken. Whatever had captured him seemed to be taking him. Osman uphill. As he could feel each step lifting upwards, he began to notice that the thing was breathing heavily, as well as occasionally letting out coughing noises and strange chattering sounds. I've heard a lot of this chattering, and there was one of the videos I'd done, y'all remember, that I did have a lot of chattering in the, in the video. It sounded like a lot of talking that we couldn't understand. For three hours, Osman was carried like this through the wilderness when suddenly his sleeping bag was dumped onto the ground and warily peeked outside. Although it was dark at the time for him to clearly see what was out there, he could vaguely make out dark images and shapes and hear what sounded like several large creatures chattering unintelligibly. Among each other, and it seemed to be the family of a very hairy humanoid his old Indian guide had told him about, Osman called out to ask what the creatures wanted, and he was answered with more of the chattering sounds. He thought of escape, but his legs were too badly cramped and painful for him to be able to walk because of the long journey and being crammed into the sleeping bag uncomfortably. As it got lighter outside, Osman claims that he could finally make out four humanoid creatures unclothed and fully covered in shaggy hair. According to him, there were two big ones which seemed to be father, which seemed to be the father, which was a massive specimen, approximately eight foot tall, and the mother as well as two other small ones which looked to be children, a boy and a girl with smaller, meaning that they were only around six to seven foot tall. Osman would later say their appearance and he he, he described them and i found it for y'all and the way that he described them is right here the young fellow might have been between 11 and 18 years old and about seven foot tall and he might weigh around 300 pounds his chest would be about 50 to 55 inches his waist was about 36 to 38 inches he had wide jaws narrow forehead that slanted upward round at the back about four to five inches higher than his forehead the hair on their heads was about six inches long. The hair on the rest of the body was short and thick in places. The women's hair on their forehead had an upward turn like some women have. They call it bangs, among women's hairdos. Nowadays, the old lady could have been anything between 40 to 70 years old. She was over several feet tall. Oh, she was over seven feet tall, sorry. She would be about five to 600 pounds. She had a very wide hips and a goose-like walk. She was not built for beauty or speed. Man, that, already he's in a bad place. Some of those lovable brochures and uplifts would have been a great improvement on her looks and her figure, he said. The man's eye teeth were longer than the rest of the teeth, but not long enough to be called tusks. The old man must have been near eight foot tall, a big barrel chest and a big hump on his back, powerful shoulders. His biceps and upper arms were enormous and tapered down to his elbows. His forearms were longer than common people have, but well proportioned. His hands were wide and the palms were long and broad and hollow like a scoop. His fingers were short in proportion to the rest of his hand. His fingernails were like chisels. The only place they had no hair was inside their hands and on the soles of their feet and the upper part of their nose and eyelids. I never seen their ears and their nose and their eyelids. He said, I never seen their ears. They were covered with hair hanging over them. The creatures did not seem threatening or aggressive towards Osman at all, and indeed the young ones seemed a little frightened of him, but neither did they seem ready to let him leave. According to Osman, for the next six days the family of Sasquatch forcefully kept him there. The large male constantly nearby and sitting at the only obvious escape route. During this time, Osman claimed that the family of creatures slept within the shelter lined and covered with bark and dry moss, and that gradually the curious creatures would come closer to observe him, including the younger ones. The family of Sasquatch also offered Osman food in the form of nuts. Sasquatch also uh, were uh, trying to feed him a form of grass, which the young Sasquatch would definitely climb and give him uh, grass, trying to force him to eat grass, which is probably edible weeds. In return, Osman would let it play with his snuff box, which he would practice opening and closing as well as tasting the snuff inside. When the young male seemed to demand one for his sister, Osman gave her a snuff box as well. 
where the most part of the adults were described as mostly resting all day while the children played and climbed. Osman claimed that on several occasions he had picked up his rifle and tried to walk out of there, but that the large male had stood in front of him holding his hands out and vocalizing irritably. Although Asman had his rifle, he chose not to fire upon the creatures as they seemed remarkably human, showed to inclination towards harming him, and he was not sure if his rifle would even hurt the massive beast, instead only serving to anger it. Considering the youngster uh, one seemed to like playing with the snuff box so much and licking at the remaining snuff within that the father had also shown interest in them, Osman began to conduct a plan to incapacitate or even kill the large adult male by, fighting, by feeding him a full box of snuff, after which he felt confident that he would be able to escape with little resistance. One day, Osman opened a new box of snuff and took a dose, and at the same time, the adult male had reportedly suddenly snatched it away, emptied the entire contents into his mouth, even going as far as to throughoutly lick out any remaining remnants. That's going to be bad. As predicted, the male Sasquatch fell violently ill, and Austin made a run for it, reporting and firing his rifle over the mother's head as she pursued him and scaring her off. After some time of slogging through the wilderness over a very wary being, followed by the family of Sasquatch, Austin was finally rescued by some loggers and brought back to civilization. Osman would keep his story quiet for decades, afraid of ridicule until increasing reports of Bigfoot sightings in the 1950s persuaded him to finally come forth with his story. Wow. Uh, Mr. Osman stayed with his story until the day he died. This goes to show that they will come, they will take you. Uh, they took him there. They didn't want him to leave. It was an abduction. And how many times do we hear people being abducted and then, you know, later found in other places? Uh, he said they did get angry with him whenever he did try to leave. And um, it just goes to show that they will take you. They will abduct you. And um, if he wouldn't have made that one sick, what would have happened, you know? It really makes you wonder. But um, I thought it was worth sharing. This is going to be on the series. It will be also on a playlist I'm going to put it in. Uh is Bigfoot Violent is going to be the name of the playlist. But um, I wanted to get this out to you guys. And uh, hopefully you'll like the series I'm working on. This is just one of them of an encounter and an abduction. Um, I think, you know, I think it shows a lot that they, they will take you. But um, what would have happened if the one wouldn't have got sick? I look forward to your comments. Thank you for joining us, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Keep your head on a swivel and don't be something's dinner.